All right, let's start. Um, morning, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, let me allow more people to join remotely first. Okay, so um, this week we are kicking off a new type of vulnerability, right? As you already know, this new type of vulnerability is called format string vulnerability. We're done with Stack Overflow, and now we're looking at another stack-based vulnerability. So this is the so-called format string. So um, I believe that you already watched the video, so you know like in the, on the high level how a format string managed to work. Basically, you use a printf or other like that takes format string as an input, and the vulnerability happens because of the format string is controllable by the client or say by the attacker. So the attacker can abuse the format string to specify you know, more format tokens than the print app was supposed to take so that it can use that format token to leak information or to write information to memory locations, right? So we talk about arbitrary read in the video. We also talk about arbitrary write. So for arbitrary read, you can put more formatted, you know, format tokens so that you can read those informations from stack because starting from the six to be printed argument or say the seventh argument of the of print app, the argument will be stored on stack. So you can abuse that to read the content that's currently on stack. Uh, and then for arbitrary write, you're gonna use percent n, which means that you're gonna write the number of bytes that has been outputted by the time the print app is about to parse percent n, and then you're gonna give percent n an argument like which represents a memory location. So basically, when print app handles percent n, it will then look at the associated argument. It will then look at the memory address of that associated argument and write some value to that particular address. And if we can control that address, and also we can control how many bytes that we output before print app parses this per percent n token, we can you know, achieve our arbitrary write means that we can specify where to write and also we can specify what value to be right to that particular location to that particular memory address okay so this is how they work on the high level um and um yeah so as i mentioned this is you know if this is the print f the way that it works is that a the first you see the first the six arguments uh, will be controlled or will be represented by registers. And then starting from the seventh argument, it will be represented by the elements on the stack. So starting from the bottom of the stack. So that's why if you look at the right-hand side, you say, you see that this is the bottom of the stack, right? So this is six, which is the seventh argument for printf but also it is the sixth argument to be print, right? Because the first argument of printf is always the format string. So starting from the second printf's argument, it will be the first to be printed argument, right? So that's why this number one goes to RSI, which is the second register you know, of the argument according to X the six sixty four calling convention as well as like two, three, four, uh, and then into number six, it will be stored on the stack. And then the followed also be stored on the stack, okay? And then because of that, we can use this uh, format string vulnerability. So before we uh, go to the lab today, I wonder if there is any question that you would like to ask in terms of format string vulnerability. So like during, the Tuesday's class, there are students asking me to explain how print app works. There are also students asking me about like why we can do an arbitrary read or how to calculate the paddings if you see 
if you watch the video, you saw that sometimes the format string that we construct has some AAAs, which is the padding, right? So students also ask me like how to calculate the paddings, right? So if you have any questions about format string right now, this is the perfect time for you to ask. Yes. Yes, because of the architecture, because of X is 664. And in fact, if you look at X86, that will be different from X8664. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the question here is that can we, yeah, I'm going to use one example to kind of like go through how print app works. I'm going to find one, I think. It uh, looks nicer. Sorry, just give me one moment. I'm just trying to find a good example for us to explain. Okay, maybe I think this could be a good example. Let's use this. Okay, so I am going to use this example, which is an arbitrary right. So um, what it's doing here on the left is a vulnerable code. This code like takes buffer as input. Buff is something that users can control. Okay, and then it used print app to print the buff. All right, and then a malicious user can construct the buff to contain format strings, and then the print app will only just print buff directly. So in this case, how I, I'm going to explain how the attack would work, and then keep in mind that the goal of this attack now is it arbitrary right. And the goal is to write this value, a thousand, to this particular address. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to explain this. Um, this is the format string that we have, right? So we have each of the, I call it format token, right? So let's start with format token first. So in the previous slide, we already have an explanation about the, if you, you, can, if you have the slide, you can look at this particular slide, slide 24, it's just to control the written value by format specifiers. So those are all format specifiers. And then going back to our example, where we have percent zero, 200 x right? So this means that you want to print a particular, like if you have a argument followed by that, right? So suppose, let's say you have this print f. So this means that you are going to print 10, but then first in text format, so this means that you want to print it in a tax decimal format. And also, this part, it means that you want to output 10, but then you want to output 10 with 200 bytes, okay? And of course, this 10 is only one zero. It, even though that you're gonna print it in tax format, it will be just an A, right? So there's no way for it to occupy 200 bytes. So that's why there is another part, which is the start of it, specify that, okay, I want to have a padding. 
So this is what it means. It means that I will to output this particular argument in hash format output that for 200 bytes and then pad with zero. Okay. So this is how it, how the format tells you. And then looking at this print f statement, which means that it's gonna print f the first argument in this format, right? Okay, so where is the first argument? According to the color convention, the first argument will go to um, RDS, right? Because RDI is the one that points to the format string. So RDI is the address of that format string, or it will be the address of box, right? Okay. And then RDI will be the second register that will be outputted in this format, right? Okay, and then let's continue. Then the next will be, sorry, I say that one. This, the second is RSI. And then the third is RDX. And then the next will be R7. R RCX, right? Let me go back to this. I think it's at the beginning, right? Okay. So then the next will be RCX, and then R8, and then R9, right? Okay. And then go back to that slide. We're looking at this, right? And then so we have how many? Percent zero two zero zero x do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, right? Okay, so that means that we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is the first to be print argument, the second, the third, fourth, and fifth. So that means that for this five tokens, we're gonna use that specifier to print this five registers, right? Okay, good. Okay, and can someone tell me so far how many bytes that were already printed? That's right, good. So now we are, we have printed a thousand bytes, right? Okay, good. Now let's continue, look at the next token, which is the one that I marked in red, right? So now this is the time for print app to parse that specific token. And then that token tells you the following thing. I'm gonna write it here. What does it mean? So this, this part is the so-called positional argument. It tells you that I'm going to look at the 11 to be print argument. Okay. I'm going to write it here. And this is very important. The 11 to be print. The printed arcs. Right. And what does it mean? Like, where is it? Can someone tell me where, where is it? So, we know that the first of five go to register, right? So starting from the six will be print. Yeah. Exactly, right? Yes. So then what about the eleven? Where does it go? So think about this. The sixth one will be at RSP, right? I'm gonna use this way to mean that it stores at RSP, right? Okay. And the seventh will be RSP plus eight. Right? And then let's just keep going, right? So A is RSP plus, I'm gonna use, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use has, has, RSP, right? And then the 10 is RSP plus has 20, 11 is RSP plus 28, right? Is that right? Yes, so that means that the 11 is at this location, RSP times S. And then now let's look at the stack. 
So on the right hand side is the stack, right? And let's count it. So one line, this line is RSP starts from RSP, and then after this line is RSP plus eight, right? Okay. And let's just go the following. So plus eight, uh, hex one zero, hex one eight, hex two zero, and then here is hex twenty eight, right? So starting from this location where we store the goal, like the address, right? Our target address. This is the target address they want to write to, right? Okay. So now print F will figure that I want to output the, I want to write something to that particular location because of this that's about it, right? All good? Oh, one job. Yes. So I'm the first five more bytes so by storing the five bytes. So but here in RP, there's a decimal in RP. So in the middle, it works. So the first yeah. one byte, you yeah. find five of them, five bytes per exactly. byte. Exactly. So it's R9. Yes. Yeah, but here, uh, it's stored in the RP. It's stored in the RP. It doesn't store the RP. The registers are stored here. Yeah, but in the stack. Yes. Uh, it's just a bunch of pages that we're going to turn that key into another thing. I see what you're saying. So that's a good question. So. Not really, because if you look at here, this is the four by screen, right? It stores the address of the four by screen, right? That's so, RDI. So what's it stored in RSI? So RSI will be some, some value that is not shown here. It depends on the formulas, like the, the some you know the operations above that. Because right now we're not assigning any value for according to print F. So it's like whatever the format thing or uh, format says is just like that value is stored in RSI. Sorry, no, uh, the format string itself yes. has nothing related to RSI, RDX, etc. Because oh, okay. the format string is the first argument of printf, right? So it has it is only related to RDI, which is the first argument according to F six sixty four. Okay, if that is clear then the relationship between the format string and the register RDI is that RDI, first of all, like it is as RDI itself is only 64 bit, right? So there's no way for you to store an entire format string in 64 bit in any case, right? So the way that it works is that instead of storing the format string in the register, it's gonna store the address of the format string. So in this case, if if you look at RDI, it will be in type of So the RSI will be the first argument to be print. So in this case, the RSI is going to have like an arbitrary value. But then if you have, say, print F to box, have a one there, then this value will be in RSI. So in this case, there is no RSI. Right, in this case, there's no value. Or say the value depends on the context of the program, right? Okay, yeah, so the way that printf works is that the first, it will look at the format string, which whose address, again, the address is stored as in RDI. And then it will parse the format string. So in this case, the first one, it says it will be output in hex. Right, so that in that case, then print app will treat the associated register, the associated uh, uh, argument in this case, which is RSI, right? Treats that as an integer because now I'm, I want to ask, uh, I want to output it in hex format. So that's why now you're having one. On the other hand, though, if it is not hex, okay, say there is a percent x. Right. So let's say there is per print app percent x, and then what it will do is that it will consider still its RSI, 
But then of course, RSI, again, the 64 bits is not, they cannot store an arbitrary string. So it will consider RSI itself as a also startup char. And then it will look at where RSI is pointing to. Which, like, if RSI will store the address of the string 53. So for example, if here we have this, right? If we have this, the first is still for my string, nothing changed. But then in this case, RSI will be considered as a address start char that points to, hello. Okay, yeah, good, all right. So this will be very important to you by the time that you use printf to read, like to do arbitrary read, because using percent s, you can also look at a particular location on the stack. And then basically you are telling printf to print that location on the stack. And you specify the address on the stack so that the printf will point to, will, will print out the value that's stored on that stack's addresses. Not the stack address particular location, but like treat that as a, like as a reference to go there. Right. So, for example, instead of having percent eleven dollar n, if we have percent eleven dollar s there, okay, then it means that it will still find that location, right? It will still find that address, and then it will read the value that this address is pointing to, and then print it out from print out. Okay, make sense. Good, I see my hand on your hand. Good, awesome. Okay, then going back, going back to arbitrary write, which, yeah, going back to arbitrary write today. So as we just said, now we use positional argument to go to that address directly, right? And then because of that, we can write to that address with the value of a thousand, which is specified before percent eleven dollar n right but then you may ask me why do we want to put this address at that location and also why do we want to put pad like a padding there right so the reason why we want to put padding there is because we want to keep the stack aligned so for example in this case you want to make sure that your address which is the one like the hex five five one also five and the four seven zero eight always start as RSP like plus eight or plus hex ten like a plus a multiplier of eight, right? So if we don't have that path, what will happen is that in this particular place, this will start to contain part of the address, right? But then if we use do the same way to print with the position argument, then your address will be kind of a cutoff in the two places, right? Yes, question. Yes, so why why can't we just write like a southern hat? That's a good, good question. Yes, we can. Actually, I'm about to talk about that. That's a very smart question. So this is one example of doing, you know, uh, arbitrary right. There is a simpler solution, which is exactly what you said. So, and then we're gonna work on this now together. And later on, it's also gonna be the same as the way that you're gonna do the lab. Okay. So instead of just outputting that five registers, like five arguments again, and why don't we just do something else? So let's construct, you know, another uh, format string together which we only just output some arbitrary, you know, a thousand bytes before we specify the position argument. And then we put what we want, like the, that target address there so that we can make it work. All right, okay, I'm gonna wipe this. And then if you wanna take a picture, feel free, but otherwise I'm gonna wipe it right now. Good. Picture, yeah. I'm gonna wipe this part. I'm gonna keep that. 
So let's try to construct this one as this. So what we are hoping is that the output, like here on the right, output a thousand bytes using whatever way, right? As we mentioned, you can just output any of those things. And that's enough. Right, we already have a thousand bytes. Right? Okay. Then now the next that we're gonna do is we need to figure out the position, the location that you want to write to somewhere. Right? Okay. So the next will be percent. Right. That is like and also add. Right. Okay. So we want to Right, a position argument somewhere with this app. And then we need to think about that. Then in this case, how would the stack look like? Right? Because this whole thing would also go to the stack as part of the uh, the first argument, right? And then in this case, we can store the format here on the stack, right? So we need to give them the stack. All right. So now I'm gonna draw the stack here. So the first is this specific part, right? And then this is this is part. Of this part. So let me let this actually let me move this a little bit because I was being fast and you can think about it. Let me go here. All I see this is the stack. This part. So that is percent zero one zero zero zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Okay, so that already occupies kind of the one item, right? Good. So that's good. Okay, that is good. Let's do that. Wait, I think I pointed wrong. Seventy two empty, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Evidently, I'm pretty bad at counting. Good. So then let we can put this percent here, right? Now we occupy one full kind of argument, so-called argument. It's like one entry on RSP, right? It's like the sixth argument. Good. So now the next that we're gonna do is that it's gonna have some position, some value here, right? And then it'll have this dollar M. I don't know how much is there, but what I know is that there's no way for me to use this location to, to specify my address anyway, right? Because like after that, we need to put this will be the address. But then we also know that before the address, we have to have this character and this character. So we know we cannot use this anymore. So we have to start from the next. So this is RSP eight. This is RSP password. Okay. All right. So then, all right. Let's just put the address here. So this address will be, you know, two sixty four target address. Okay. And then we need to put something in the middle to fill this off, so that we can make this target address starts from RSP plus. Has 10. And that is going to be the, the eighth argument, right? Okay, so now we know that we need to put, make this value equal to eight. All right? Awesome. Okay, so now we have eight there, dollar, n, right? But then, like, from the, the address here, there's still some, some space that we need to fill. So how many that we need to fill is that 
we need to make sure this is the padding, right? So I'm going to insert a padding here, right before address, right? And now I need to make sure that this part, I mean, I'm going to use another color. all the way to this part, right? This entire part is equal to eight times six, so that's 16 bytes. So this means that every item is eight bytes, right? And then this means that because of the position, I want to make this address the eighth position. And then I know that starting from the six to be printed argument that we saw on that. So I know that I have to fill in 16 bytes before I put my address in, right? Good. And then in this case, let's calculate how many characters that we need to put there. So now we already have, uh, this is eight, right? And then we have $8 N. And then from that, we have to put five more characters there, right? So you can just put K, J, K, J, K. And that's it. Oh, sorry. I said I'm very bad at counting. Okay. And that's it. Good. Yeah. So here I put a uh, backslash N, but everybody knows it's backslash. So you can just put it like A, A, A. It's the same. As long as, and the reason why this is fine is because because I put the target in that, right? And then also when I do two six four, it will I will naturally come with a zero zero because this guy is not that large. It has some zero zeros in the higher part of the address, right? So that's why using this, this is good enough for my print app buffer to terminate. Okay, good, awesome. Yeah, and this helps you. And if everything makes sense, by the way, is there any questions? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? No? Good. If not, then let's go to our lab today. So same address, different ports. This time it's 7777 because we're in the week of seven. Um, two files there, format string .c and format string. Uh, you can run this with whatever library libc that you have. Um, the source code is just for your reference. You don't need to rebuild. You can just run format string directly from your end. Okay. So now it's 11. I am going to give you guys um, until maybe 11 15. Uh, we're going to work on this together. So if you look at the challenge, you will notice that this challenge asks you, I mean, of course, it asks you to participate. So it will ask you to, finish, to figure out a way to let the program execute the function that will help you log in your participation, okay? So it turns to the question of, given that you know that the format string will help you to do arbitrary read and arbitrary write particularly, how can you convert an arbitrary write to an arbitrary execute? So basically you want to change the execution of the program so that the program will call the login participation function. So can you take advantage of this arbitrary write so that your program will execute that function? So it will, you, may, you, you will need some time to brainstorm how to make that work. And if you don't know how to make that work, then my task for you would be, can you write a function by yourself? And then let's just call this function called arbitrary write. And this function is going to take two arguments. 
One is where, the other is what. Means that I'm gonna write to this location with this value. Okay, so I want you to come up with a function, attacking function that can achieve, like you can just say, as long as you send the parameters of where to write and what value to write, you can use your function to do arbitrary write. Okay, yeah, I hope this is clear enough for you. Awesome.
Yes, it's the thousands is reflected here. So percent N means that in our altitude, like in the score, the number of times that have shrinked to this particular location. Right, right, exactly. Whatever coming before that. So that is a thousand bytes. And the, the reason why it's thousand bytes is because each one is 200 bytes. Like this specifier, 0 to 100 bytes, it means that you want to print something in 200 bytes, had it with 0. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's not only just zero. It also has the uh, argument, which is going to be stored in the RDI. But you don't have to specify it because in your program, if you're running the program, the RDI already has a value. And then potentially what you could do is turn that plot with some values there, but it's not really necessary because RDI will have some value added. Okay, so but when when it prints that the window start, mm -hmm. in the window start, it will be the RPP value. No, it won't look at RSP. There's nothing related to R RPP in this case, actually. I mean, you can re you can just consider this to not exist. It's mm -hmm. not that because of RBP it will read this value. It's mm -hmm. because of that this value happens to be RSP mm -hmm. all the way to there. That's why we're talking about this, right? So it's because that this value is of RSP cost transfer rate, this location. And that's why your print app goes to here. It will take this so-called 11th argument, okay. which will be as RSP mm -hmm. plus tax 28. Okay, this is the 11th argument, and then whatever is the same that it's in that value. Right, whatever, like how many bytes it only counts the number of bytes. It's not a matter of what value is stored. Mm -hmm. Right. It's only just like the number of bytes that it output. Okay. So mm -hmm. over here mm -hmm. in your lab, then mm -hmm. so so in like for example in Minshot, I can store the value of the value function. So I can make it a super thing. You want to store the well, not really. I mean, this is not one of the, like the way that they achieve the arbitrary, right? Because if you look at this, you print, I mean, by the way, like after you print it, you're not, like you don't control, but you don't change the, the execution, right? You only just like, overwrite some value, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then you need to think about how can you overwrite some value so that you can change the program. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But if you don't know how to do that, that's okay because we're going to talk about that later. Just write that arbitrary write function by itself. Mm -hmm.
All right, let's work on this together. I'm going to set up my environment real quick. Okay, so can someone tell me what's going wrong with this, this code? Also, I am going to override this screen. Here's my virtual machine. Okay, yeah, so can anyone tell me what's going on on this program? Where is the vulnerability? Yes, in the print FV1, right? Okay, yeah. Cool, and then also this V1 comes from user's input, right? So basically, you just need to send it from S3 and then it will parse it. And then it will give you some power for you to ultimately go to the win function, right? So your goal is to go to the win function, right? Good. Okay. So uh, the question is how to, what can we overwrite so that we can go to the win function? And so if it comes to two questions, right? Which is where? And which is so. You want to see where saves the value of what. And in the sense that what is pretty like straightforward, which is to see the function, the address of where exactly. Good. So now we just need to figure out where that we want to overwrite so that we can let the program call the win function, right? Okay, some possible thoughts. What about we still overwrite the return address on the stack? Okay, can we do that? Yeah, how? Can you just speak louder? Yeah. So we have the V1 one open for V2. Yes. But if we try to work to yes. the return address So then have you checked the the is the canary is on or off? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And then also you need to figure it out the value of canary, right? Because if you are going to, if you are going to, well, I mean, you maybe you don't want to overflow it. So there are two possible ways. One is you still want to overflow it, right? So then you can overwrite that value. Um, however, because the stack canary is on, it's gonna be very hard for you to find the value of the stack canary, okay? But then if you just directly, like specify the location of that place that stores the win function, then the problem, the challenge here is that you don't know the address of the stack. Because like for this challenge, is ASLR is also turned on. So that means that every time that you run the program, the stack location, the address of the stack will also be changed. So there's I mean, it could be do that, but like it, it's going to be hard for you to find out the where if we if the goal for you is to directly overwrite the return address. So, besides 
return address? Is there any other places that we can overwrite? Okay. Yes, exactly. That's very smart. A got table, because got table stores function pointers, right? So if we kind of change a function to wait and then let the program to call that function, then by the time that the program calls that function, it will actually call it, right? Then we need to figure out a function that the program is calling, right? And then we know that this is the only function that we have, the main function, right? And then in God table, it's gonna store libc functions, right? Okay, so which libc function does our main use? Right, does this main function use? It use printf, right? And then use memset. It, I mean, also like it used set buff at the beginning, but then set buff is not in this loop. So that means that after it takes the input from the user, set buff will not be called again, right? So we need to find a function that will be called again after the program takes the input. And luckily we have this while loop, right? So all those functions that are inside the while loop will be constantly called. So we need to overwrite the got table, or overwrite the entry of one of those functions in the got table with this value, the function of wait. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna show you one example, which I'm using memset. Okay. Because you can also use other ellipsis functions in the, in the got table. All right, cool. Okay, so can someone tell me how to figure out the location of memset? Like now we're, we need to find the item, the memset location in the God table, right? So that we can have a clear, a concrete address. So can someone tell me that how can we locate that? Yes, and then how? Yes, yes, exactly. So. We can look at the binary statically. So it's got stomp for my screen, right? Okay. And specifically, we want to actually look at the PLT table, right? Because the God table is not going to show in the disassembly because the God table is the data part, right? It's a data section. However, the PLT section will tell you where that it will read, right? And then from there, we can know where the God table is. For example, let's take a look at memset, right? Okay, so memset tells us that whenever a memset is being called, it will do this, right? And then that means that this is the God table location that stores memset, okay? All right. So now we have a very clear goal. Our target address will be hex 601040. Right. I am going to I'm still it's gonna just write here so that it has 601040. And then the value, right? What is the value when you figured out the address of win, which is okay. Which is four zero zero nine six four. Also, this is in hex. Okay, so now we have a very concrete task. If you have an arbitrary write already, then all you need to do is to write to this address with the value of this value, right? Awesome. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes. Now it's 1124. Let's work on this together from uh, since 1130. So I'm going to give you about five more minutes for you to work on this. And if we already implement this arbitrary write function, then 
this would be fair, fairly straightforward. We should be able to explore it by ourselves.
All right, let's work on this together. So first, I'm going to just open up the, uh, this is a template that I have, okay? So we just need to, the goal for us now is to write, uh, right? which is our X word, something here, right? And then you don't have to worry about the other thing. The other thing is just a very easy, you get it in and then you just send to the bus out until you receive the question that asks you to do is to write. And then I'm going to turn on, turn to the interactive mode and then type my uh, uh, handle there, right? Okay, so this is a very straightforward template. And then the goal for us is to come up with this buff so that we can write to Mem set at the, it's not PLT, sorry, it's the got table, right? So that is this location with this value. All right, cool. So this is the time that we're going to use this template to, to instruct us on how to do this, all right? Okay, so the first thing is how many bytes that we need to take? Can someone tell me? Exactly. Yeah. So that is hacks for zero zero nine six four. So we need to do a conversion real quick. Four zero zero nine six four. Right. Okay. So this is that value. Let's click it. So that means that we need to do in the time. Then it will become percent zero because this is the pattern, right? Okay? So pattern specifier. After that, four, one, nine, six, seven, zero, eight. And then X. Well, you, you don't have to use that. You can use E, like in whatever way, because you already specified that you want to also do that how that's many bytes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then we need to figure out position and also figure out the padding and address. Well, address, we already know that, right? It is also pretty straightforward. So this will be uh, this guy, right? So in this case, then we will have address is four zero zero four zero. Okay. So there's one little tiny thing that I didn't mention. So now we're writing something to this particular address, but then because of the value, this value is large, right? It's larger than a thousand that we mentioned about. This value is larger than an integer already. So we we have printed as an L here means that it's a law. So we don't write an eight byte value to that particular address. So now keep in mind that because of dollar n, we have dollar l n. This is the specifier. All right. Now's the time for us to calculate the position and the pattern. And this two kind of like you know correlated with each other. Right. Okay. So now let's start to count the stacks. We know that this place will be the start of RSP, right? Because this is our program. Okay. So let's count how many arguments that we already possess because of the common string. So this is one by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So starting from there. I forgot again. Let me count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here is R S three plus eight. Okay. Does it make sense? Good. Good. Awesome. Okay. And then let's continue. One, two, something, something, right? Which is going to be the position. And then it will have dollar ln, right? Okay, so that means that 
we cannot make address anywhere in RSP plus A, right? Because here there is already some bytes occupied. So that means that the address again has to go to the next positional argument, right? So then in this case, this is the six to be printed argument. Right? Again, we can detect that. So RSP plus 16, which is hex 10, will go to the eight to be printed argument. So now we know the position. It will be percent eight dollars L and right? And then now we need to put some padding there. And then let's count how many bytes that we already have so that we will know how many uh, characters that we will put for the padding, right? So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we only need one character to be the padding, right? All right. Looks like that's everything. Okay. Awesome. So now you just like construct this out and let's just put that in our attack. Try that together. It will be uh, percent zero four one nine six seven zero eight. Eight D and then percent eight to A one. I'll put that and A eight and then make all right. That should work. And let's try this together. Finger cross. I also didn't debug, so hopefully this will work. Okay, so it goes to here. It's right already, right? Okay, and now you can just do Thursday. Good, your idea is locked. We're good. And then if you look at the record, you should see Thursday. Oh, 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 right here. And that's it. Any questions for today's lab? Yes. Yes. It's the, you know, this right. Exactly. Yes. So not little endian, also not in hex format. They have to be in decimal. So that's why we have a conversion. It converts this to decimal. Okay. And this is hex, right? This is hex decimal. We convert that to this. So this is like in base of 10, and that is in base of 16. Yeah. All right. But the first is basically comes from a string itself. Right. The first part comes from a string itself. Awesome. Good questions. More questions? No? We're good? Then you're good to go.